Here we see an inscription which states that this building has belonged to the wealthy Björn family. In 1871, Bodil was born into this very family. Today, this building is the town hall of Krageren. In 1904, Bodil Björn was at the missionary school of the Danish branch of women's missionary workers. Only one year later, in 1905, the train took her to Constantinople. The missionary sister got a job in Mesre and Mosh. She was 34 years old. In a backward and poor country as Ottoman Turkey was then, medicine and public medical services were in no way available. People could become disabled for life as a consequence of the most ordinary illnesses. In 1907, specialized nurse and midwife Budil Björn establishes a clinic here. In the morning, we heard how the cannons were roaring. We saw from the window how the houses of Armenians, as well as the Armenians who tried to flee, were burning. We saw how they were firing at people with broken hearts. I was approaching the beds to help the patients get up, to save them. I would crawl to them because I could get killed. But those people still needed me. That's how I felt. Bodil is bedridden due to tortuous worries. She had succeeded in saving only three teachers and three students from the mass murder. The activity of missionary and welfare providing organizations in Turkey, which had been defeated in World War I, was gradually being halted. Four of our heroines, Alma Johansson, Budil Björn, Hedvig Bull, and Karen Jette, had to return to Europe, to their families, saved from the claws of death, in ruined health, and with an uncertain future. Besides the heavy burden of memories, Budil was taking home two valuable things, two-year-old Raphael, and the documentary papers of the Armenian massacres, her photo journal. Like the Armenians, the people they cared for, our heroines became deportees. In Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Germany and Estonia, far away from war and suffering. They didn't find rest, they didn't find themselves hoping they would find at least one of their little orphans, or in some way would help the migrants rescued from genocide in the deserts, they decide to return to the hotbeds of genocide. How did they manage to find strength again? It is both surprising and understandable. Bodil Björn came to Constantinople after founding an orphanage in Constantinople. Björn finds out that numerous Armenians have migrated to Eastern Armenia and need care. Before Budil Katarina Björn came to Armenia, the country had already been Sovietized. She founded the Lusakpur Orphanage in the city of Alexandropol, today's Gimri. Here, everybody called her Mother Katarina. Budil Björn left Armenia in 1924, when the Bolsheviks shut down the orphanage in Alexandropol that she had founded. The care of the children was transferred to AMERCOM, American Committee. In effect, Budil Björn as a Christian missionary is exiled from Soviet Armenia. However, before she retires and returns to Norway for good, she continues to work in Syria in Armenian institutions caring for orphans.
Decades later, in the attic of the Oslo home where Sister Bodil had lived the last 25 years of her life, Jussi Björn, the son of Raphael Fritjof, finds the suitcases of his missionary grandmother. New documentation about the Armenian genocide is discovered. <laughs> 